People love hummingbirds. And they're such interesting birds. I think it's amazing that they survive because they're so small. <laughs> they're just so adorable, so cute, and so pretty. To sit and watch them do their acrobats is just amazing. And hear the sounds as they go flying through. They might be small, but these birds have attracted a large following at the Iams Nature Center in Knoxville. We had a wide variety of activities and talks. 41 vendors, from TWRA to Legacy Parks, Tennessee Wild, Arts and Crafts, Native Plants, it's just tremendous. While there's certainly plenty to do here at the Wonder of Hummingbirds Festival, there is no mistaking the star of the show. The first thing they want to find is the hummingbirds. That's the first thing they head for. No matter what other activity is going on, they want to know where the hummingbird banding is. So we'll take them and put them in the stocking. And that just kind of helps me to uh, control the bird. Mark Armstrong is a master bird bander who has left his handiwork on thousands of hummingbirds. And there's the band on his leg. Hummingbird banding is pretty unique because you have to make all the bands yourself. So I can show them how we do that. And you measure the wing, the tail, and the beak. Males are smaller than a female, so when you measure the wing, that can, kind of gives you a clue right away if you have a male or a female. Then you look at the feather characteristics. On adult males, the, uh, what they call the gorget is that bright red throat that you see on them. It's wonderful to handle a bird like that and to know that it could you know, go all the way to Mexico and then return all the way back and be in my yard the next year. It's just an amazing thing to th just think about. But before you can ban these fast flyers, you have to catch them. Today they're using two kinds of traps to capture these birds. The first is a manual trap with a door attached to a string that allows it to be opened or closed once the bird goes in to feed. The second is a self-trapper. The bird flies in here to feed and then when you come up, it's startled. And the bird's first instinct is to fly up into the top where it can't get away. We've banded uh, 30 birds and had about four or five recaptures of uh, birds that we previously banded, but we're, we're real tickled. The ruby-throated hummingbirds banded here today breed in North America during summer, then migrate south for the winter, traveling as much as 600 miles, primarily to Mexico and even as far south as Panama. The less common rufous hummingbird also migrates through Tennessee and sometimes even stays for the winter. Most people usually take their feeder down like in uh, first of October, but if you leave it up, there's a very good chance that the rufous hummingbird will come and visit it. I had one to show up in January of 12. It was 19 degrees outside. It was a hatching year Rufus, and it was my first, and I was so excited. Could I have a volunteer to help me release it? While sure. teaching people about hummingbirds is the main focus of the festival, the overall goal is to help people connect with nature. This is a barred owl. That's bar for the barred markings on the breast as opposed to a barn owl. They have the rounded head and the pretty brown eyes. These animals have all been injured and can no longer live in the wild. But by being here today, they can help other wildlife survive. The groundhogs are our only true hibernators. Their heartbeat drops down to about one beat a minute and they eat their entire lives getting ready for that hibernation. Doing programs like this make a tremendous difference because it gets people to see close up and personal what's really out there and around them. We're all part of a big tapestry and everything is interconnected. And if we lose something, we lose part of ourselves. It's an important lesson to be learned, especially for our future leaders. Children don't get outdoors enough anymore and see nature. They're in the house watching television and that breaks my heart because I was outdoors all my childhood and my children always played outdoors. And so I think this generation is really losing some very important things not to be outdoors. Which is why coming here and having the opportunity to not just see wildlife, but to interact with it is so important for kids like six-year-old Audrey Hood. There she goes. Okay. It fell over in my hand for a minute and then flew. Pretty cool. It felt like it buzzed in my hand, like vibrated. I like to hope that we will in the future have all of the animals and the birds that we have now instead of them going extinct. So the more she can be involved, 
the more that leads into the future of people protecting the wildlife. And the more opportunities we will all have to come together and celebrate the wonder of hummingbirds. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.